Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with another edition of the Sick Podcast, Talking Titans. We got our uh, draft analyst, John Vogel, with us. We're jumping into another player that should be in our sights. Uh, it's going to be Mr. I always do horrible with this, but Olu Fashanu. That's get, that's pretty good, right? We're getting there. There you go. There you go. All right. Uh, I've been practicing. Sammy, start me up. <laughs> Turn up your Turn volume. Up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. The Sick Podcast. Talking Titans. Levis. Towards the end zone. Got a man. Touchdown. Wow. And it's the fourth TD pass of the day in the debut of Will Levis. The sickest Tennessee Titans podcast. Sick. It's going to be sick. All righty, folks, we are back. We are jumping into another player at the tackle position, this time Olu Fashanu, tackle from Penn State. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, John's with us to discuss these players. John, my first question to you, uh, the little bit of research I've been doing on this cat, obviously because I'm, I'm big on Joe Wall, and you definitely uh, gave me some confidence if we do go this route. But the one thing I've heard a little bit is that he leaves a little bit to be desired in the run blocking. Is that something that you would agree with or disagree with? And can you fill us in on on, on anything you might have to add on that? Yeah, uh, that's a good opening question to get into the game of uh, Fashanu because he's he kind of has that brute mauler tendency to his game uh, where he likes to get downhill and he likes to attack people and, and, and will win when he gets downhill. Um but there are there is some consistency issues, especially when he's working up into the second level where he's not always good about peeling off his blocks. Uh, he wants to finish the play. And so it, while it's nice to see a guy get a pancake, you know, especially when he's driving a dude up in the second level and then collapses on top of him, that's always fun. Um, sometimes, you know, especially when you're in a zone run type scheme, which Penn State ran some of, they, they ran a good mix of stuff. You want to be able to peel off one guy once you've already kind of pinned him into a spot and work up into that linebacker at the second level and take him out. And you don't really see Fashanu do that, you know, where he doesn't continue to extend that hole, allow that running back to keep going. He's going to leave that guy one on one with his running back to make a play instead of just going ahead and paving it and leading him the safety, you know. So I think that's where people kind of see with Fashanu. <clears throat> the other thing, and I know we talk about quarterbacks' hands. Right. We talk about every time we see the oh, he's at nine inches. Oh, there's tiny hands. Da, da, da. Olu has some tiny hands, which is not common for a guy that's six, six and three hundred and twelve pounds came in with, uh, I believe, eight and a half inch hands. So what that does as an offensive lineman is first off, it makes it a little bit difficult for them to hold their blocks. You know, so when you engage that guy, you get up in his shoulder pads and you grab that dude. You want to hold him in that block, you know, not to the point where you get called for holding when he gets outside of your frame. But a lot of times you can keep that guy right in your framework, you know, and, and, and control it all the way through. So if you have smaller hands, it's a little bit harder to grab that guy and control it. And, and also it's a little harder to, get to deliver a punch. You got less to work with, uh, especially when you're working against a 250, 275 pound dude. Uh, that's coming at you at full force. So those are the couple things I think that knocked Fashanu, you know, coming into, uh, you know, the process once they kind of figured out, oh, he's got really small hands. You know, you don't see offensive linemen typically under nine, really nine and a half very often. And so when you see them get down to eight and a half, you're kind of like, oh, that's a little concerning. Mm. Um, but I thought he did really well, you know, outside of the Ohio State games. Um Throughout his career, he was he was very consistent, uh, at least locking in that first block and getting that job done initially. See that that's what bothers me too about this. I mean, especially with his injury, uh, a little injury at the combine. Um, he has the small hands. Uh, his scouting report says that he is uh, his pad level is high when he when he goes in for a block, mm -hmm. and um, obviously um, he gets caught off balance too with his hands. I kind of want. I, I love the shape. I, I love the size. I, I love the stature of that tackle, but I, to me, I, I see him as the fourth tackle. If I was if I was grading uh, lineman, he's a fourth tackle. I, I, I would I would put Mims up there before him, and uh, you have uh, Fawaga and obviously Joe Walt. So I mean, just just change my mind because you have him so rated rated so high. 
how can you change my mind saying, you know, I have a left tackle with small hands. He's cold off balance sometimes. He's not that great in the run game, but he's he's pow- very powerful, you know, in the pass game. And obviously when he stretches to, to, to engage on a block, he gets cold off balance. Yeah, so that's called waist bending. Um, when you see him stretch to try yeah. to get a to try to get a block in there, and that's a bad habit that you have to coach out of guys sometimes when they come up. And you know, I know I know scouts. You know, one of the guys that really mentored me, he'll immediately write you off if he sees a, a waist bender. You know, where he's that's a problem. Um, with Fashanu though, I think the I think sometimes yeah he gets caught reaching and it was really in that ohio state game he really struggled with uh i'm not gonna be able to get this name down he's not in this class yet so but jt uh tuyamapala or whatever his name is at ohio state Close enough like, that guy that guy absolutely ro- ripped him both years that they played um and really gave him a lot of fits and it was i think it was really his quickness and getting him into a point where he was afraid he wasn't going to be able to get around in, in time to block him off but what I did like about him is, first off, outside of those games against Ohio State, uh, he always looked like he was a really good athlete. Uh, tested decently well, five eleven in the four, in the forty yard dash, which ultimately for offensive linemen doesn't mean too much. You really want to look at that ten yard split in the first uh, ten yards they're running, and he hit one seven seven, which is pretty darn good for an offensive lineman. Um, you know that he can change direction pretty well. You see the explosion. Uh, especially when he's into his lateral sets. I thought that that was something that's really Im- important. And he's just, he's very strong too. While he, you know, he can get very high sometimes with his, you know, initial placement and plays high with the pad level, he's still very strong and hold in the block. Uh, so that's one of those things where it's, hey, we get him to come down just a little bit off the snap, get him to ne- bend at his knees a little bit better. And now we're talking about a guy that's just, he's, he's a franchise piece for 10 years. And uh, I think that you're going to get you get some of these guys come out of Penn State, and that's such a that's a school where they put so much into the athletic ability and making sure that you get all that testing done and and nailing all of that. But they just don't have all those guys that come out of there are so raw. And I hate the helmet scout, but that's really what it is. That's the truth about Penn State is you're always left going if this guy was coached a little bit better, if this guy, you know understood his his form his technique a little better he'd be we'd be talking about him as a top five player period you know and chop robinson this year is one of those guys where it's like if he just was more consistent with his form as an edge rusher he'd yeah. be a first round pick and we wouldn't be having this debate but um i think that mm-hmm. you get him the right coach he gets in the right system you're talking we're talking about you know a pro bowl guy maybe an all pro that's the type of you know traits that he has just based on his athletic ability his pure strength and all of that that's where i really liked him in his game so to play devil's advocate now again if uh joe alt for whatever reason is gone before seven you know you had brought up coaching we have one of the most renowned offensive line coaches in the history of the game and bill callahan um do you think if the titans if if all isn't there at seven and Fushanu is, do you think the Titans jump on him and hope that Callahan can develop him to make him that, you know, all pro, or do you think they maybe look elsewhere at a different position or trade back? Um, just to, in that situation, what do you think they do? It's tough, you know, because it, it, I think, you know, when we talked about it, when we talked about Joe Alt. I think that they would prefer Alt just based on measurables, just based on, you know, all of that. Now, Fashano could fit in there too. You know, he could. Um, I I think that this is a very deep tackle class. When you start to get, you know, even toward the bottom of the first round, you're still probably going to have a couple guys that you can work with. I mean, you guys, I think you mentioned Patrick Paul. That's a guy a lot of people like that could anchor down a left tackle. He might not be the best right now at this present moment, but he's a guy that, that you know, can develop up into a, a top-tier tackle in the in the league for sure um but you know even if you want to talk bring somebody and move them over to the right side you have that opportunity as well there's you know uh we talked to christian jones jc latham though i think latham be better as a right tackle you know we mentioned fuaga as well in the last and when we talked about alt uh you typically don't want to make that move unless you absolutely have to 
But if you like the pass set, you think that they can hold up on the left side, then you can do that. I think if you if you have Alt way above everybody else on your board, and you're like, okay, this is the tackle that we want, and he's not there, I think that you can go ahead and get some capital and move back, especially with there, there could be four quarterbacks off the board at that point. If there's four quarterbacks off the board – well, the great talent's getting pushed down, you know, in the other positions. You're going to have a couple of edge rushers sitting there. You're going to have a couple of wide receivers sitting there, and people are going to be willing to move up. Yeah. And you're not going to have to move back that far, you know, with these teams that are looking to move up. So if that happens, or you might even still have a fourth quarterback on the board, and you got Minnesota and Denver trying to move up, and that's not going far either. I think you could even drop back, pick up a little extra capital, pad the pockets, and say, you know what? We're going to go ahead and take the next guy on our board, and we're expecting him to be in that 20 to 30 pick range. And we'll go ahead and pull the trigger a little early, get him at 12, 13, wherever that is. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll yeah. Did you, we're going to say something? No, I say that's, oh. that's a fair, fair enough. You know, it's a. Uh... Yeah. I mean, listen, there, there are two guys that uh, I, I definitely feel a lot better about Fashano than I did about an hour ago, John. So that's good. <laughs> Um, cause I know it's very likely one of them is going to be there. Now, is there potential that both of them could be gone? Maybe, but I think that's highly, highly unlikely. So to know that there's a lot of, obviously there, we knew they were upside with, with, uh, uh, Fashanu anyway, but, um, again, he is a guy that is supposed to be top of his game at pass protecting. And that's what we need the most. So, um, I would not be upset if we went that route. And, and that's definitely more comforting to know that either, either of those guys, are going to be very impactful in this offense in the next year. So um, that's going to wrap it up for uh, Mr. Fashanu out of Penn State. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see if he's going to be around at number seven or wherever we wind up drafting. Uh, and we'll, we're going to be moving on to the next player. So, Sam, you can send me out, us out. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast, Talking Titans, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play and Apple Podcasts.